The Birmingham Stallions boxed his ears for three quarters and wound up beating the Generals. But a week later against the Orlando Renegades, the Generals opened up the offense, giving Flutie more room to roam, and he wound up throwing four touchdown passes and running for 52 yards. Three of those touchdown catches to wide receiver Clarence Collins. It was Flutie's kind of a ball game. The quarterback who was the new star in 1984, Steve Young, led the Los Angeles Express to a 33-13 lead against Houston in their opener, but wound up losing to the Gamblers by a point. And last week, Young led his team in rushing, but Los Angeles could not get enough points on the board and lost to Portland 14-10. Today, these two quarterbacks worth about $16 million representing the pinnacle on today's sports marketplace will meet at the Meadowlands, both determined to prove their worth in professional football. As ABC Sports presents... The third week of the United States Football League. The Los Angeles Express and the New Jersey Generals. Yes, I know it is March 10, but as you look at the skyline of New York City, it's like a summer's day. And we're about ready to play football here in the Meadowlands where thousands have been tailgating and are now beginning to come into the stadium, a crowd that's expected to be somewhere between 50 and 60,000 people. And it was announced just a few minutes ago that this will be the site of the 1985 USFL championship game. The United States Football League today featuring the Los Angeles Express and the New Jersey Generals, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson with a bad cold, along with Lynn Swan, our analyst for the ball game today. Swanee, the weather's shocking, because a year ago we had snow and ice in the works here. But I think equally shocking to a lot of people about the USFL is the fact the Los Angeles Express is 0-2. Well, the weather is a pleasant change, and the Express, well, you're right, it is shocking. People expect it much more out of them, because they have all the talent in the world on paper. Now, the offensive team led by Steve Young Steve Young and Doug Flutie are both known for their running as much as their passing. But for L.A., they don't want Steve Young to run that much. Last week he had 110 yards and he still lost the ball game. What they would like for him is to throw the ball down the field so the New Jersey Generals will be trying to keep him in a situation where he feels pressure and wants to run and not throw the football. Well, you know when your quarterback is your leading rusher, you've got a problem, don't you? You're in big trouble. That's right. Flutie, on the other hand, you let him start running around and they're working toward that end. Uh, now that little guy will beat you. Here's where running has been an asset for Doug Flutie. If a negative is his size, then by rolling out and scrambling, he gets into a position where he can see downfield and becomes an asset. They don't want Doug Flutie to scramble because when he scrambles, it's like the old days at Boston College. He might pull a miracle out and come back and beat you when you think you've got him down. They want to contain him. But to contain him and make them go to a more predictable offense and running the football is still a problem because the man who runs the football is Herschel Walker, and he's, he's tough. Yes, he certainly is. Well, for Flutie now, he has had a month to get the handle on things. And this being the third game, you can expect that he'll be playing with more confidence today. For Steve Young, the quarterback of the Los Angeles Express, this is sort of a homecoming for him because Greenwich, Connecticut is his home. And he feels the pressure, I am sure, about being 0-2. Here he is right now with our colleague Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, Steve and I were just talking about that pressure. You know what a competitor of this man is, and it's driving him crazy. It, it has to be on your mind that you are going to and put a little bit more emphasis, I guess, on this ball game. Oh, no doubt about it. We're, it's driving us all nuts. We're all winners. We're used to winning ball games, and uh, we just haven't played as a team the first couple games, but we're looking to have a great week of practice. We'll be fine. Steve, let me ask you this. Uh, are you trying to do too much yourself, trying to get this offense generated by running too much? Are you going to try to stay in the pocket more? I have to. We have to get the on-time ball, get the offensive passing game going with the, the throws on time rather than the scramble situation. I'm running too much, and we got to sit in the pocket a lot more. Got some AstroTurf ferns last week, and I know here we are again on synthetic turf. Will that bother you at all? 
Well, not really. I've patched them up, and I tell you, a week uh, for me is giving me some good time to heal. I'll be fine. You have your best games on AstroTurf. Let me ask you this now. Your mom's been on the phone all week. How many people are here? This is just down the road from where you went to high school. Uh, we have about, hopefully about 100. Hope, I wish they were all right here behind my bench, <laughs> but they're all over the stadium. But we got about 100. My mom did a great job. All right, good luck today, Pete. Okay. All right, he seems very loose, Keith, and he's ready to play. He is relaxed, that is apparent. But at the same time, he is a very aggressive athlete. And he simply does not accept the fact that he's going to lose. And uh, I think that's probably the reason uh, that has led uh, his coach and the offensive people to suggest to him, stay in there a little longer. Because when he gets a little frustrated, his first move is to pull it down and do it himself. Well, because he's been able to do that for so many years. He has confidence in himself, and as we've said, he's an outstanding athlete with big running capability. But they want him to learn to be an experienced quarterback, to learn to read the defenses much better, put the ball downfield in the air to broaden their offensive attack. The game is on as Roger Ruzek will kick to Robert Alexander and Tony Bodie. The Express will have the first offensive possession as Bodie takes it on the one-yard line. He's out of Montana State, and he comes whistling up the sidelines to about the 28-yard line before he is finally tumbled down. So it'll be Steve Young, the left-hander, opening at quarterback, 6'2", 205 pounds, big, strong back. And behind him in the backfield will be Mel Gray. And uh, Tony Bodie will be one of the slots, or H-back, the wide receiver will be uh, Dwayne Gunn and Jojo Townsell, and the tight end will be Gordon Hudson, who was a teammate of Steve Young at BYU. Townsell only saw the ball a couple of times last week against Portland. 298! They go to the ground, give it to Mel Gray, 175-pounder out of Purdue. He moves from the 29 up across the 30 to about the 31. Picked up a couple of yards where Tom Woodland brought him down. Up front, it is Gary Zimmerman, 280 at tackle. Derek Kennard, 285 at guard. Mike Ruther at center today, 275. Mike Durrett at guard, 270. Jeff Hart, 275, the other tackle. Jeff Hart, of course, out of Oregon State. Ten years of pro football, came out of the NFL. Now let's listen to Steve Young, who's wearing a microphone. Right. Little tiny microphone in the helmet. Young straight back on second down. Goes down the middle with it for Townsell. And overshoots him, and it should have been intercepted by the generals. Number 27, Gregory Johnson, had that ball on his fingertips and just simply didn't go up and concentrate and bring it down. Defensively for New Jersey, they line up with Lockett, Woodland, and Byrne as the front three, and they're all tough. Lynn Madsen, Matty Ace, and Gilbert back them up. The linebackers are Weddington, LeClaire, Joyce, and Leopold. And the secondary, Justin, Preston, Johnson, and Ken Johnson. Come back. It's that. 298. 298. Huh. Out of the shotgun. Yeah. Now unloads it, and that one could have been intercepted. It's off the hands of John Preston. So he was looking for Townsell that time on successive passes, and both times Townsell had double coverage. Well, Jojo Townsell was open quite a bit last week in the ball game. Steve Young couldn't find him because he was running out of the pocket. So you have to assume that during the week they got together, talked about it, and he decided he'd try and find him a little bit more in this ball game. Jeff Partridge is in the punt now, went to the University of Washington, the younger brother of the general's punter, Rick Partridge, who went to Utah. Jeff averaging 37-plus, low kick. It takes a Los Angeles bounce where it is fielded by number 23, Donnell Daniel, and the generals run him up the sidelines and lead him out of bounds at about the 45. It was a 40-yard punt with a roll, and so New Jersey will have good field position as Doug Flutie comes on the field for his first offensive possession. And the people behind him will be Herschel Walker, 34, Maurice Carthen, 33. The wide receivers are Clarence Collins and Danny Knight. And the tight end starting today is Sam Bowers, though Jeff Speck, who's slightly injured, will play some. Up front, it is Kerry Lee Rinko, Stroth, Hall, Harris, and Maggs. And now the first snap from the 45-yard line for New Jersey. Flutie gives it to Carthen. And Carthen, who has just signed a contract for next season with the New York Giants on the other side of town, 
Moves across midfield to a near the 49 for a six yard pickup where Howard Carson, the middle linebacker, brought him down. It is Fletcher Jenkins, Georgia Tika, Eddie Weaver, and Ben Rudolph up front with Mellon Tree, Carson, and Howard, the linebackers. The secondary is Henderson, Drain, West, and Scott with Alonda Smith out today, injured. Herschel Walker's first carry, and he gets to the line of scrimmage and maybe one yard. John Hadle, the head coach of the Los Angeles Express. Walt Michaels, the head man of the New Jersey Generals. And John Hadle been doing a lot of head shaking, trying to find the key to get his ball club untracked. Whereas Walt Michaels, on the other hand, has a sense of fright every time his quarterback starts roaming around. But that's the Flutie way. Harmon is in now, along with Speck for New Jersey. Flutie straight back. Gets outside. Has a man. Pass good to Speck. First down. As he failed to hold it, however, going out of bounds. He, he looked like he had it in his hands, but as he neared the sidelines, he bobbled it away. So Speck had yardage for the first down, but couldn't hang on. Again, we see Flutie using his speed to get away from pressure. Speck is out and out drops this one. It's an easy catch. When he's pulling it into his body, he just lost the handle, Keith. Rick Partridge is now on to punt for the Generals, averaging better than 43 yards per kick, ranked number five in the USFL. Dwayne Gunn, out of Indiana, is the man deep for Los Angeles. Low snap handled all right by Rick Partridge and a high hanging punt. That Gunn's going to let go, and it takes a New Jersey bounce. And they've got it down inside the five. Donnell Daniel working on the kick team covers the ball and it's a 43 yard punt. An incredible day of weather on March 10 at Giant Stadium, the Meadowlands in New Jersey. And they mark the contact with the ball as Daniel covered it for New Jersey at the Los Angeles 6. And there the Express go to work. Handed off to Mel Gray, goes right, zigs left, and picks up a couple of yards out near maybe the nine, where his forward progress is marked. The officials for today's ball game, Ted Humphrey, the referee, Dave Fowler, the umpire, Bob Walker, the headlinesman, line judge is Tony Bateri, the back judge, Richard Eichhorst, side judge is John Everett, and the field judge is Michael Looney. We have a small microphone and Steve Young's helmet. Reset! 190! Go left! 190! <laughs> Quick pop to the sidelines, gets it over to Gunn. Gunn is close to a first down as he gets out around the 17, and that should be close enough for the first as Ken Johnson came across to make the tackle. Ken Jerry Holmes out with an injury, and of course Gary Barbaro didn't come back this year, did not come off the knee surgery well enough to play. No, he didn't. But Ken Johnson is an aggressive young man playing on the corner position. Right here, Sierra gets the ball, Dwayne's over the mark for the first down, but Johnson figures he'll pull his head back beyond that marker. Townsell comes wide to the bottom of the picture. 298! 298! Throwing again on first down. This time down the middle with it. Catch is made by Townsell. And JoJo out of UCLA moves it up to the 30. That'll be another Los Angeles first down. Keith, the key for Steve Young attacking the New Jersey general defense will be patience. They don't play anything too difficult to read. They drop back very conservative. And if he takes his time, he's going to find his receivers that come open late underneath the linebackers who get a deep drop. And that's exactly what Townsell did that time. He came in motion, delayed just a second, and he let the linebackers take their drop, went into the area that they created for him that was open. Kevin Nelson, who ordinarily would be a starter at running back, is hurt and out of the lineup. Robert Alexander's in there now. Generals show blitz. The Express pick it up pretty well, but Mel Gray trying to find a little hole over the right side runs into Tom Woodland and comes to a stop. 96 James Lockett and 71 Woodland Keith both had great pressure. 
so that when Gary Zimmerman, the left tackle, came across and he pulled on that play, they were already deep in the backfield, and the running back had no place to go. You see Jim LeClaire, the grizzled veteran, number 55, he'll jump in and out of that line a lot to show blitz, but he doesn't always come. Young on a deep drop, runs away from the pressure. Goes down the middle intended for Hudson to tight in. John Joyce, number 47, and Bobby Leopold had come across to pick him up. And the pass is incomplete. It'll be third down and about nine. During their career together at Brigham Young University, Young averaged five completions per game to Gordon Hudson. They have a good rapport having played together for so many years. Hudson didn't play last year because of injuries. And confidence in a receiver is maybe the, probably the most important factor for a quarterback. 215! 215! To the sidelines, a timing pattern. And Townsell gets loose and works his way across to the New Jersey side of the field. He's knocked out of bounds at about the 43 by Gregory Johnson and John Joyce. Get Townsell out there and get him one-on-one, -on -one and he's tough. Excellent pass by Steve Young on the sideline pattern. Some speed on the ball. But look how wide Townsell is. But he's good footwork right there. He knows exactly where the sideline is. Doesn't make a move out of bounds. Then he hugs it. He tries to pick up some blocks downfield all the time trying to protect himself not wanting to get hit from the blind side by a linebacker. It's set! 290! Get back, get back! 290! Gray. He's a slasher, a little scooter, and he pops his way across the 40 near the 39 for the better part of four yards on that carry. Keith, most of what we hear Steve Young saying at the line of scrimmage doesn't mean a lot. He's just calling out numbers just as a part of the cadence. But when he calls an audible at the line of scrimmage, you'll be able to tell by his voice inflection more than anything else. The middle instead goes to the corner of the town zero. And Zell can't pull it down as Kerry Justin was there with him, and Kerry gave him just enough of a tug on the left shoulder to keep him from hanging on to the ball. Now, Keith, Steve Young expects to audible a lot. He saw something, the defense moved. He thought this pattern was open. It's a corner route. He is open. The ball is just a little bit late. But even with that, Townsville has a chance to make the catch, but he's stripped of the football. He's out now, and number 87, Leroy Campbell comes on, getting his first action. Done right, Gordy. It's set. 298. 298. Third and six. Not a problem. Freddie Gilbert runs him down, the former Georgia Bulldog. That was number 74, Jim Byrne, the right end, who came charging right through the middle of the offensive line to force Steve Young out of the pocket. You'll see him here. He dips inside. It's a little game they're playing. Inside tackle goes to his left, creates an opening on the right, forces him out of the pocket into Gilbert, who's coming up from the outside on containment. Jeff Partridge in to punt. Donnell Daniel deep to receive. Partridge's first punt today, a low one with a bounce, worth 40 yards. Ten red shirts up there, but now they drop off. No pressure, much better punt. High hanger, and it runs Daniel back inside the five to the two. But now he gets some help and comes back to the six, maybe the seven. Pretty good coverage that time downfield by the Los Angeles Express with 8.09 to go in the first quarter. It was a 50-yard punt. The totals for Walker and Carthen, the running backs for the Generals, most productive a year ago, as you see. But this year, a little slower, perhaps, to start. Herschel did get loose against Orlando for 110 yards. He totals 116 now, and Carthen at 165. Carthen averaging just under six yards per carry. From the six. Herschel Walker pops it out near the 10. David Howard, right side linebacker out of Cal State Long Beach, brought him down. In that first game for the New Jersey Generals in Birmingham, Keith, they very seldom handed that ball off. 
to Herschel Walker as a running back, but he came into the ball game in the second half and caught a big pass play for them, 55 yards, and helped set up a touchdown. I think we're going to see more of him on the outside as he moves around in his formation, clearing out zones. 458! 458! Walker again. Gang tackled as he comes near the 13. So they'll be looking at third and about three. They had sent Carthen outside that time, along with double wides on the left side, leaving Walker the lone remaining back. When you see Herschel out there as a wide receiver, it gets your attention. <laughs> it's a real threat. People seem to forget because he doesn't look like he runs that fast, but he's run a 9-3 in a 100-yard dash. He's wide right now at the top of the picture. Normally means offensive lineman is Ball moved, start. and that's what happened. Offense number 22, still third down. They called it on Flutie. Oh, apparently, Doug Flutie and the cadence either. We'll take a look at him. You see right there, yep. he started to move. That's a false start on the part of a quarterback. Remember so when Tommy Prothrow coached the UCLA and Gary Beban? I remember particularly, Beban was moving, was swinging a foot just before the snap every mm -hmm. time. So give him a little extra head start. Charlie Weaver loved that sign. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure. Flutie fumbles the football. And the generals cover it down around the fire. The ball just popped right out of his hands. And so it was almost a big break for the Los Angeles Express. But Kerry Lee Rinko, number 68, was the man that covered the football. And now Rick Partridge comes in to punt. You see him, he's about, he wants to throw the football. He's got one hand on it. When he takes off to run, he doesn't bother to change the grip. And right there, he just flips right out. You have to be very careful in that situation in the crowd. They're very lucky to get that ball back and be able to punt it away. Rick Partridge standing at the back of the end zone. His first punt today was 43 yards. If Dwayne Dunn can handle it all right here, the Express will have pretty good field position for their third offensive possession. We're in the first quarter of play. Partridge gets it out. And it's handled by Gunn. He's inside the 40, 35, 30. He's gone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Dwayne Gunn goes 45 yards for a touchdown. That reminds me of last week with that bunch of flyers from Houston. Gerald McNeil took one and ran it 79 yards for a touchdown. We have to give partial credit for this touchdown on the punt return also to the express punter's Jeff Parchett because when he punted, it took the express out of bad field position. The defense comes on, they hold him in three plays, now they punt the ball away, and he did the one thing a punter should always do. Don't waste time with a lot of moves, make the first man miss, and find that wall, find an opening, and just head straight forward with speed. Zendejas for the extra point. It hits the left upright and kicks back on the field. And oh my, how many times uh, he'd gone 40 straight, including the playoffs, without missing an extra point. And all of a sudden, well, it was here a year ago, remember? We had Ruzek hit the goal post three on two or, th <laughs> three, two or three times. Oh. It looked like the snap was all right. The hole was pretty good, but he hooked it into that left upright, and it came right back into the end zone. So the Express missing the extra point at 5.33 of the first quarter leads 6 to nothing. On his end, Dehoff, when he misses an extra point, it's news, and he just missed one. First one as a professional. Score in. Portland's out in front of Denver, 7 nothing. first quarter. Buford Jordan, two-yard run for the touchdown. I tell you, that Jordan is... With Marcus Dupree hurt for the season, you know Jordan's going to get a lot of work, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him very likely lead the league in rushing. He's an extremely talented man. People forget because of Marcus Dupree being with the breakers how good he really is. High kick. Daniel at the four for New Jersey. He's got a hole, and suddenly it's closed off at the 22. Dwayne Gunn going for the touchdown, his first return for a touchdown this year, his second in his career. Keith, I returned punts for Pittsburgh my first two years, and you don't have to fake people out. 
What you have to do is pick your way through a maze of openings and closings to find the openings before they close up on you. We've got 5.24 to go in the first quarter. 6-0 Los Angeles. The Generals will go to work from their 23. The New Jersey Generals go to work from their 23-yard line. First down, Doug Flutie unable to wiggle off the hook the last time. And the Los Angeles Express on guns uh, return for the touchdown of 45 yards on the punt. Now let's see what they can work out. We'll talk. I'll ask you. They got Walker wide to the top of the picture. Flutie looking for him. Has to pull it down and gets up the sidelines and comes up across the 30-yard line. Here's Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, I'm with Wayne Gunn and ran that punt back, and I want you to tell us about the play. It looked like it opened up in a hurry. Well, as soon as I caught the ball, I looked up the field. It was a high punt, and, but he didn't punt it that far, and I didn't think his coverage would really be down there. I looked up the field, and I saw a few holes opening up, and as I got to the holes, they even got a little wider. A tremendous blocking on the play, and uh, after the blocking, the rest was just outrunning whoever was there. And steps out of bounds at the Los Angeles 45. Excellent play number 80. Danny Knight was a wide receiver in single coverage to the to the right of our of the uh, television here. He takes his man downfield. He fakes a play action to the to the right, and then just takes off. There's absolutely no one there. One of the offensive linemen peeled back for a little protection. That's David Howard, linebacker, chasing him, but there's no way a linebacker is going to run him that old. As they throw it over for a screen to Carthen, and Carthen, Los Angeles played it very well. Now we've got a ruckus going on down to the bottom of the stack. But Carthen uh, lined up behind four linemen on the near side of the field. Trying to set up a wide screen play and uh, it worked for about two or three yards, and that's all. That was a play I thought we were going to see last week at Tampa Bay, but the Bandits never got around to it. We've got a personal foul called against the Los Angeles Express. That is so uncharacteristic of Walt Michaels to run a play of that nature. A trick play, Walt Michaels, a very conservative coach prefers to drop back and pass but look there's no offensive lineman there just the center the ball is snapped Flutie knows he's just going to turn and throw it and it's just setting up a screen to Maurice Carthen personal foul defense number 58 first down that's the old swinging gate play personal foul was called on number 58 David Howard the penalty gives New Jersey a first down at the Los Angeles 28 it's Herschel Walker. They turn him back inside. And Herschel picks up a couple of yards down to the 26. Herschel Walker. David Howard did a good job turning Walker back inside. Number 58, David Howard is on top. You see right there the elbow going up. And the punch. And another one. I remember back in the playoff game against Denver. Oh, here we have the same thing again, Keith. The old swing and gate play. Lodi looks at Carthen, but decides this time to keep it. And goes down to the 15-yard line. Number 52, Andrew Mellentry was a linebacker. He was still on that side to make the play. Well, you got two or three things to consider. One, there is the surprise factor of it. I'm surprised, though, frankly, he comes back with it in the same offensive possession. But at the same time, you've got all these people lined up on the left-hand side of the field. you got Herschel Walker sitting up there on the right-hand side as a potential wide receiver. So it's, it's a problem. It's a first down at the L.A. 15-yard line. Walker with the ball. Cuts it to the outside and goes to the five. The, the brilliance of making that, doing that play at all and then doing it twice is the fact that you just can't anticipate it coming from the generals. You can't coach it. It catches you off guard. Now they come back, run it again, and sets up another play going to the outside. And here on this particular play, this is just all Hershey's Walker speed, the strength, lowering the shoulder, taking on the tackle. Number 23, Ed Scott. It is first and goal now at the Los Angeles 5. 
Walker. Got a hold. Touchdown. on that side number 76 through a big block for Walker as soon as Mags made his contact Herschel saw the hole open and slashed into it well, after a few big trick plays they go back to the basics he gets a lot of people out in front of him everyone does a great job number 64 was Wayne Harris making a key block and Herschel using his leg drive barreling under for the touchdown Ruzek for the extra point the place kicker from Weaver State Gives the New Jersey Generals the lead, seven to six, at 2:59 to go in the first quarter. Now that extra point that was missed earlier by the Express causes, in this situation, the New Jersey Generals to take the lead by scoring the touchdown and making the extra point. And so Walt Michaels comes out, flip flopping things around and showing some trickery, and it gets him the lead. New Jersey goes 77 yards in seven plays. Now it's Tony Bodie and Robert Alexander waiting for Roger Ruzek's kick in the crowd starting to get into the ball game as the Generals take the lead 7 to 6 in the first quarter. It's to Bodie at the 6. And Tony Bodie back to about the 27. Jack McNell is the man that coached Doug Flutie in his college career at Boston College. Here he is now with Tim Brandt. All right, Keith. Now, I should make mention here that Doug Flutie does not want to talk to us during the ball game. We respect that and can fully understand it. But, Jack, you were with him all those years, and you've watched him here now through this first quarter. What do you think? <laughs> he looks the same. He ran naked and got a first down. He scrambles. He can throw the football. He looks just great. It's really weird for me to be looking at him when he's got somebody else's uniform on. Does he look comfortable to you, like he's, he's comfortable now with these players in this system? He looks like he's comfortable. He looks like he's having fun, and that's the key to him. If he's having fun, he can just make things happen. All right, Keith. So can Steve Young, who throws to Bodie. Bodie had it and dropped it. David Hersey, who is the, the bigger man at that position, the H-back position, is out with a knee injury. Tony Bodie steps up in to play the slot. He's not quite as big as Hersey, but you can see that Young touches the ball in beautifully here, and Tony just simply dropped it. Bodie is a very capable player. It's Gregory Johnson, number 27, that comes up and makes the hit. The problem was he just didn't find the handle on the ball. He can't afford to bounce it around with someone coming up. Maybe he could send some back there and we got a little nervous. Looked like he wanted to run a quarterback draw for a moment. Instead has to take it outside and he set out of bounds and that'll get him a first down. Coming over John Preston hits Young. He was well off the playing field and the flag came flying out of the pocket in a hurry. Jeff Hart, number 72, came over there right away to Steve, Steve's age, but right here, we're going to see he's well out of bounds, and the hit, he takes it square in the chest. That's the kind of hit, Keith, that will get you hurt, because as soon as you step out of bounds, most people will relax. They figure, well, I'm out of bounds, the play is over, it's dead, I can't be hit. There are people along those sidelines, the markers are there, the bench is there, and they don't always clear out of the way fast enough. I imagine that brought a quiver to John Hadle. Oh, yes. The penalty moves the football out near the 45 where it's a first down. 2.10 to go in the first quarter. The Generals leading 7-6. to six. Los Angeles missing an extra point. It's set! 298! 298! <laughs> Looks down the middle. Nobody there. He's caught. And dropped short of the line of scrimmage at the 43. Brought down by James Lockett. Kate, I, he did have someone there. Number 83, Dwayne Gunn, was coming across the middle. I don't know if Steve could see him or not, but had he led him to the outside, Dwayne Gunn could have come across, picked that pass off, because the wide receiver at the bottom of the screen, Townsville, had cleared out the entire zone. We'll take a look at it now from our end zone camera. You see the play action. He's going to be in the center of this pocket. He's going to step up. You can't see Dwayne Gunn. He's going across the middle of the field. Right here, if he's looking up, he can throw the football. 219! 
Second down and 12. That's picked off. No, it's dropped. My goodness. The man in the red shirt had it right in his stomach and couldn't hang on. Number 26, Kerry Justin. Pass intended for Townsell. Keith, I think right now we're seeing the performance of Steve Young that's affected by what's happened over the last week. Being drilled to get the ball downfield, to throw the football. Don't worry about running so much. And there's an effort in his effort to get the ball downfield. He's throwing some bad passes into coverage. Townsell is completely covered. Johnson's coming in. Dustin, excuse me, to just pick this one off and run for a touchdown. Young is now three out of nine, 46 yards. Blitz is on, and they get him. John Joyce, the linebacker. So the Generals blitz more this year, I think, than we saw him through a half a season last year. And they get Young this time for his the third sack of the ball game. In an effort to change up, to make things a little more difficult for Steve Young to read and get comfortable, they start blitzing their linebackers. The coaches said they're going to change up just slightly so he can't just sit back and read simple and conservative defenses. Jeff Partridge to punt. Daniel coming across, takes it at the 36. And he is down at the 38. So we've got 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. And the Generals now with good field position after that 34-yard punt. Birmingham Stallions got back on the winning side last night against Orlando, 34-10, and a big night for the wide receiver Jim Smith. The Baltimore Stars, defending champions, losing last night at Memphis, 21-19. They are now 0-2 and 1. I would have never thought it of that ball team. Maurice Carson nailed at the line of scrimmage. And the man leading the charge is Eddie Weaver, ex of Georgia. Eddie Weaver also has a microphone in his helmet. We'll see him, Keith, move, moving around that defensive line. They have him listed as a starter for right tackle. But in certain down passing situations, he'll move to the outside of the defensive end because of his great speed. Quarter's over. He started to call the play. Then you heard him say, stay put. That means let's wait it out, take a breather. I'll go talk to the coach, and we'll go to work as we go into the second quarter of play. So after one, New Jersey seven and Los Angeles six. Donald Trump came by to visit before the telecast, and he was hoping for 60,000 a day. It might be close to that. I'm not sure all of them are in the house from cooking out in the parking lot. That tremendous <laughs> tailgating party on a glorious day in New York City today and the surrounding area. And the generals leading seven to six go to work now on second down and ten. Walker coming back this way. Give him one block, but he can't get the one block. And down he goes inside the 40. Ed Scott trailing him all the way with help Scott from Troy West. Troy West and Edward Scott. A Red Raider from Colgate becoming quite a linebacker for the New Jersey Generals. Here's John Joyce with Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, and that's been the story here for the Generals' defensive uh, strategy. You've been moving things around, trying to dictate, it looks like, to Steve Young rather than the other way around. Yeah, we don't want Steve to be able to uh, dictate the tempo to us. We want to have our game plan control theirs, and I think that's what we've been doing so far. But, John, you knew you could get to him coming into this game? Oh, yeah, we knew we could get to him with a good pass rush. Uh, maybe overload one side a few spunks. There wasn't much they could do to pick it up. All right, Keith. Lodi scrambling. Eddie Weaver's coming. And finally, he is chased out of bounds by number 54, Howard Carson. Thrown out back on the 31, and there was nothing available that time downfield. Oh, there, there is a downside risk of a scrambling passer. He runs around in the backfield, and there's nobody to throw to. He takes a sack. You see the first quarter stats, New Jersey leading there on the strength of their one sustained drive for the touchdown, the Herschel Walker touchdown. Stats don't reflect the special teams where L.A. scored on 83 Dwayne Gunn's punt return for a touchdown. 
Gunn's got another again. shot at it right now, Swanee, as he goes deep on fourth down and 17. Rick Partridge has kicked twice today, 43 and 40 yards. The Partridge brothers being featured, a low snap, rolls around, pressure's on, he's looking for some help and can't get enough. And he is thrown down at the 25, and so the Express load up and go after the punter and with the low bad snap and Partridge not being able to come up with it cleanly the Express make a break you see here he just bounces when it bounces he doesn't get a handle on it he's bobbling it gets down to the ground now he's looking for some room he still wants to punt it finds out he can't because of the pressure goes down instead of fumbling the football in an effort to punt it and so Los Angeles now with a golden opportunity, the ball at the 25-yard line in the opening seconds of the second period. Young gives the ball to Mel Gray, and Gray fumbles the football. Let's wait a minute. New Jersey's claiming it, but the man in the striped shirt hasn't said so. See what I mean? Covering the ball, Gray. Gray was hit. He was really popped, and the oh. ball came flying well, loose. Gray came flying out of the backfield. All the speed in the world. Looks like he might find open, but watch 25 Preston as he comes up. Someone else came along up with Preston. LeClaire, 25, 55, held him there as Preston just came up and unloaded, popping the ball loose. Wound up with a two-yard gain from the 23. 20. 290. Gray going wide. And inside the 20 to the 19. Mike Weddington, the outside linebacker on that side, brought him down. He did a real good job of getting there. Number 72, Jeff Hart was out there leading that particular play. Looked like he was in position to make a good block. Weddington, second effort, just got himself in position, stopped it from being a big gainer. They need about three and a half yards now to keep the ball. Otherwise, they'll have a decision to make. On third down, long three or short four, however you like it. 219! 219! They're going to run it. Gray's got it. A lot of folks over here wearing red. But he slips around the corner, and he's close to his first down. Ken Johnson, the man that finally got through to hit him, and looks like he's about a half a yard short. The way they're marking, he is a half yard short. He hit that sideline, knew his body was short of the first down, and then he took to the air. He dove, looked like he dove in front of that marker before he went out of, out of bounds, but the official judgment marked it short of the first down. We'll take a look at it from the defensive perspective. We'll see him looking for room to the outside. They're stringing the play out. They know if he's running from side to side, he's not gaining yards. You Didn't see right it. there, he clearly stepped out of bounds. So on fourth and a half yard, they go for it. <laughs> Young keeps it and gets the first down as he punches down close to the 13. See, that's an important play call psycho emotionally to this team or psychologically to this ball club. To come up with a big play, get the turnover deep in your opponent's territory, and then not to be able to move the ball for a first down could be damaging. Get you down, makes you feel like you can't get your offense in gear instead of being able to punch it down. So you go for it on fourth down, you take the chance, it comes up positive, now you've got something going for yourself. You have a little more momentum. Alexander is in, Bodie is out. Gray with the ball. Got a hole over the left side, and then coming across, number 25, John Preston. Makes a solid hit on him at the eight-yard line. Did you hear that, Keith? I mean, Preston must be in a state of mind where he just wants to make this a physical football game and make things happen, cause some turnovers. He just came up. Again, Gray's got some just out of position in the air and unloaded. Gray has picked up 20 yards and eight carries, but he did take a lick, I'll tell you that. Whack. Working him hard. He's inside the five and down at the four as Gregory Johnson, number 27, slashes in to get him. Here's one of the problems that you can, if you're looking for problems uh, with the Los Angeles Express now, 
They don't have that big back to go out there and bang away at you. A guy like Maurice Cawthon for the Generals who will almost guarantee a one-yard pickup with just any kind of blocking out in front of him. Last week against Portland, John Halo said he wanted to run the football, was not happy with the way his team was running the ball, and intended to establish that ground game. Looks like right here, he's attempting to do the same thing. Third and one. 315! They give it back to Gray. Gray goes over the left side, running in behind Derek Kennard and Gary Zimmerman, and it looks like he may have his first down. He does. It'll be first and goal, Los Angeles. Gary Zimmerman on the left side, 6'6", 280, out of Oregon, called by John Hadle, one of the best offensive line prospects he's ever seen. And I think the running right now is as much for the offensive linemen and their attitude as it is for the running backs. This team has been saying that the offensive line might be the best part of their entire football team, yet they have not played like it. No, they've not been coming off the ball with authority. If they don't come off with authority here, they won't go anywhere. They got Gray from the two, trying to go to the corner, and then knock him down at the five. Well, here's again the problem of not having your big back. The big guy, they just go straight ahead. Instead, they try to run it wide with a speed, and the general string it out, and he takes a three-yard loss. Well, right now, John Hazel is sending in his speed. People, Townsell, Gunn, and Bodie. What he's going to do now is put his receivers in, give it the appearance of a pass, and hopefully it'll spread that defensive out, defensive team out just a little bit, giving them a little bit more room if they choose to run the football. 298. Young looks to throw it. Burns after him. Steve dives for the corner, and he is short. He's out of bounds just inside the four. Number 74, Jim Burns, 6'4", 280, pursuing Young. Steve tried to outrun him past the corner, but couldn't quite do it. Yeah. Well, Steve could outrun him. He just ran out of Real territory yeah. to run in. You see him here. He's looking for the quick pass. He doesn't have it. So now he starts to use his speed. Right here, I think I would have thrown it, Keith. But of course, with his kind of speed, Steve Young runs a 4-4 in the 40-yard dash. He has the confidence that he can get in. But Jim well, Hudson, Burns just pinched him. Uh, Hudson was available early, and then uh, the receiver just started milling around down in the end zone. Nobody really broke for the open territory. 215! Give it a gray, and Mel Gray is held. They stack him up. On about the two-yard line, and that will bring out Tony Zendejas for a field goal try. I don't believe you're going to get in in professional football. I don't think you're going to get in all that many times running wide. You can, if you've got the people who are going to cut down the pursuit of that defensive line. This time, their offensive line, the express offensive line, like we said, wasn't firing off the ball. They weren't driving people away from the line of scrimmage. 19-yard field goal. He's 17 out of 18 in professional football from inside the 40. Drills this one up and good. And the Los Angeles Express who go back in the lead by a score of 9 to 7 with 8.36 to play in the first half. Mel Gray was busy in that last possession. They had 10 rushing plays. He carried eight times. They couldn't get it in the end zone. And Zendejas hits a 19-yard field goal to make it 9-7 Los Angeles. Tampa Bay is out over San Antonio now, 14-6 second quarter. And Denver is even with Portland at 7-7 in the second quarter. Other games being played today. Donnell Daniel and Marcus Hackett are the two deep men for New Jersey. As Zendejas will kick it off for L.A. 9-7 Express. Spinning kick. Hits the ground. He gets a good bounce. It's Hackett. And Hackett, who is a wide receiver, comes back to the 27, where the Generals will go to work. Brought down by Tony Bodie. By Tony Bodie. From the 28 now, New Jersey trailing by two with the football first down. And let's see if the old coach has got something else up his sleeve. I'd be a little nervous about what he might have there. They go double wide to the bottom of the picture with Knight and Collins. 
Flutie well, rolls it that way. He's got Knight. Throws it to him. Complete up at the 45. Troy West came up with a hit. To Danny White. Well, that puts pressure in the defense, Keith, is where the offensive lineman can seal the pursuit of the defensive line. He's got two receivers on one side of the field. He rolls out, and if the linebackers come up and put pressure on Flutie, like what right, right, he does here, just dumps it over the head to the open receiver. If they hang back, then he takes off and runs with the lead blocker and picks up five yards. Carthen. And Maurice Carthen moves from the 45 out to about the 49. Here's Tim again with Gary Zimmerman, the L.A. offensive tackle. All right, Keith, you were talking about the offensive line, and Gary, you get in that close, you come away with no points. Has to be frustrating. Now, is the front line all in sync? Are you guys playing well together, do you feel? I think we're playing well. I think they're just uh, the generals are calling the right defenses for the plays we've got right now. All right, Keith, the hate to cut him off, but here we go. Low swinging gate move again. Penalty flag this time. The ball is thrown short. It goes to Hull, the center, as Hull becomes an eligible receiver, I guess, in that particular alignment, and you've got a second penalty flag thrown downfield. Obviously, for Hull to catch a pass, a receiver on the outside, that step back off the line and make him the in man on the line of scrimmage, thus an eligible receiver. But if he had not reported to the coach or to the official, then the play will not be allowed. He is still an ineligible receiver if he does not report that he is available to catch a pass. That's probably the first Base play. Pass. Defense, number 52. Illegal formation. Offense, number 68. Penalties offset. Down will be replayed. Second down. Well, they had their surprise element going all right. It was good for a first down, but they didn't have the seven men on the line of scrimmage. Cario Wrinkle is the uh, number 68, the man he called the infraction on. Although that was Hull who made the catch. First time I've ever seen a center catch a ball. Probably the last time. <laughs> I give old Kent credit, though. He knew what to do with it. Oh, I've seen a lot of guys, a lot of linemen. Ray Penny, who played for the uh, Steelers and then played for the Michigan Panthers, did a real good job one ball game making a diving catch for a touchdown. He still has that game ball. They're going with it again. They got Walker up here in the slot this time. Moody's back there all by himself. Gets rid of it in a hurry and overthrows Carthen. He had to get rid of it in a hurry because number 75, Georgia Chica, was really coming. And Georgia 6'5", 290, and at full head of steam, he will get your attention. Oh, Walt Michaels is a very <laughs> surprising man today. I mean, I would not have thought that he would ever do this and do it so many times. Come out with the trick play. Georgia Chica probably told by the coach, whenever you see that, forget about anything else. Just go after Doug. Sick him. That's right. Sick him. <laughs> Get him. Get him down. Cut on him. Third down and six. From the 49. Out to Walker, and it's overthrown. And Flutie was turned upside down that time. Howard Carson was blitzing and rolled him over. And Herschel had no chance to get to that one. So rather than take the hit, Flutie unloaded it, and they save that much yardage to get Rick Partridge into the game for the punt at 6.28 to go in the first half. 54 is Howard Carson, the man just comes through from his middle linebacking position, and Doug knows he's going to be in trouble. He has to release it quickly. Herschel just was not set, and of course the ball was overthrown. Russ Compton in to do the snapping. Came over from the stallion. Low snap again. And the kick is out of there and a dandy. Floating spiral that kicks into the end zone just barely. He almost got that nose down like a nine iron and stuck it down there deep. It's a 51 yard punt, and Los Angeles will have it at their own 20. 215! 215! From the 21st down. Down the middle, it's Gray out of the backfield. Has a first down across the 30. There's that element of patience you were talking about. That's right. Has to take his time. They will give you the linebackers by their drop. The New Jersey Journals will give you that short passing game. Hope that they can come up and force some turnovers. Stop you, in most cases, from getting the first down. Give you territory and stop you at the crucial down. Mark Addicts is in the offensive alignment now at tackle, replacing Jeff Hart, number 77, the big guy from Baylor who's coming off the knee injury. Coming along well, but they're using him 
gently. Gray fumbles the football. The generals have it. Gray was almost loose, fumbles the football, and it goes right into the hands of Gregory Johnson. Keith, as he was flying through the That's offensive great. line, uh, excuse me, that defensive line, one of the players just reached up as he was going by. John Joyce. Number 47, John Joyce, and grabbed his arm. We'll take a look at it here. And he sees daylight, and he's going to run for it. He feels something good, but watch here. Ball's in his right hand. There's the arm. Grabbed by John Joyce, pops it loose right into the hands of the defensive safety. Big chance here for the Generals from the Los Angeles 39. It is Walker hit from behind, from the side rather, by number 90, Fletcher Jenkins, the big defensive end out of Washington. And there is no gain. In fact, a loss of uh, about a yard. That's John Joyce, the man who stripped the ball, caused the form fumble. Gregory Johnson picked it up, number 27. Second down, 11 from the 40. That doesn't look like George Patton. That's a New Jersey gunner. This <laughs> isn't right, man. Ludy going for the big one. Incomplete. Collins, the intended receiver, got tangled up with Wyman Henderson. Well, Keith, I don't know. I could have sworn that one might have been called pass interference. Well, the man was right there. Take another look. We'll see it here. That's number 82, Clarence Collins. Is going on there. There's the contact. Official may have decided that both receivers were going for the ball, and which they're allowed to. What helps in this call for the defensive back is the fact that he's turning back, looking at the football, and not the receiver. And the receiver, Collins, seemed to veer into him, didn't he? Yes. Third and 11. Flutie throws down the middle intended for Speck. The pass is incomplete. The coverage by Troy West on that play against the tight end. And so it brings up fourth down. So New Jersey is 0 for 5 on third down conversion so far in the ball game with four and a half minutes to go in the first half. It'll be a punt. Rick Partridge, who's had a little trouble getting low snaps from Russ Compton. Snap is all right this time, and Partridge hits a knuckleball downfield trying to kill it deep, and they're going to be able to do it, all right. It's inside the 10, rolling and rolling down to about the 3, maybe the 2. That's a 38-yard punt, but oh, so efficient. And Los Angeles is in a hole. Los Angeles leading New Jersey 9-7, backed up on their two-yard line. Other scores of games being played today. Tampa Bay leading San Antonio 14-12. San Antonio went for a two-point conversion and failed on it. And the Denver's moved out to a 10-7 lead over the Portland Breakers in the second quarter. So Los Angeles comes up now. On their own two, with 4.06 to go, first half. Kirby Warren in the lineup for the first time today. And Warren pops out of there with the ball and gets across the 10 out near the 14-yard line. Kirby Warren out of Pacific. And he was just activated when Kevin Nelson was hurt. And suddenly Warren almost comes up with a big play. Well, Kirby Warren isn't a big back yet, and you see his the size right there but he ran that time like he was that good blocking out in front straight ahead took on the small people who were standing in front of him Bodie comes in from the sidelines bringing the play the throw does go toward Townsell and it's intercepted by Kerry Justin that was a great interception and play by Kerry Justin Keith he came up on the receiver tipped it up in the air and never lost sight of it ball intended for number 26 Jojo Townsell Steve Young had time to throw looking downfield started to run finally found him we'll take a look and see it from Steve's perspective he rolls out 
trying to buy a little bit more time. And he's got a receiver back to his left, but there were defensive people all around. Now he pops it in the air, and look at the concentration here when he pops it in the air. Steele sees the football, picks it off, and now it's New Jersey with a chance to score, 3-0-4 in the ball game. Second turnover in two minutes and 20 seconds. Big opportunity here for New Jersey from the 17. Walker inside the 10. Herschel running with authority today. I'll say this, the New Jersey defense is certainly giving the offense opportunity. Partridge also on this on that punt to bring yep. them down inside the five-yard line. Herschel now, nine carries, has picked up 34 yards. The ball is just touching the Los Angeles seven. Walker again. And he is whacked down short of the line of scrimmage. Coming in, Fletcher Jenkins, number 90. Fletcher, uh, excuse me, Fletcher Jenkins, the uh, left hand just came slanting down from the left side, grabbing Herschel Walker around the legs. Coming up on the two-minute warning in the first half, they will not take the snap. So with exactly two minutes to go in the first half, Los Angeles 9-7, to seven, but New Jersey is knocking on the door. It'll be third down at about two from the L.A. 8. There's a professional football league that believes having fun is the most important business at hand. NFL, where football is still a game. The preceding message on behalf of the United States Football League. With two minutes to play, New Jersey just short of the eight-yard line on the Los Angeles end of the field. Turnovers continuing to plague Los Angeles. It's third and a short two. Walker is the deep man. Booty keeps it on a bootleg. Gets around the corner. Dives into the end zone. There's the speed. Number 76 was out there chasing him for Los Angeles. Ben Rudolph. But he just simply outran him. There we see Walt Michael smiling. <laughs> Something he doesn't do very often, but today I talked to him in the tunnel. He was in a great mood, Keith. Just excited about this ball, about this ball game. And there you see in that one play, Walt Michaels' flexibility in coaching, establishing a scrambling kind of play, taking advantage of Doug Flutie's ability, Herschel Walker's influence on the ground attack, creating the, creating the touchdown. Ruzek for the extra point try. Rick Partridge, the punter, holds it. And the kick is good. So they cash in. That opportunity provided by Kerry Justin's interception. And go back into the lead, 14 to 9. But just watch how this works. You fake the ball to Herschel Walker, you have to respect his running ability and Maurice Carthens, but he takes off using his speed to just outrun the defensive line. You heard this coach saying he lined up and ran naked earlier in the ball game. Well, this is what he means by running naked. He goes out there running the ball without a lead blocker. That means he's all alone, no one to give him any interference. Just he and the defensive line and his speed. Watch him here, he heads for the corner. Looks like it might have been a clip there, I don't know, but receiver may just have fallen down. That was Sam Bowers, number 89, the tight end, who was on the ground as Doug Flutie went into the end zone. Give his there is the an lead. old truth, though. There is an old truth here that sooner or later, one of those tough-nosed kids playing cornerback is going to get a clean shot at. Then you make like an ostrich if you see him. <laughs> that's when you exercise your hook slide. <laughs> and that's something that Doug may not have learned quite yet. Because he's like Steve Young. He's so aggressive. The idea is to put the ball in the end zone. 
And that's what he just did at 1-5-4 to go in the first half. That kick is short. The wind swirling around. Tony Bodie comes well up the field to pick it up and returns it out across the 25 to about the 26. Didn't take long. No, it did. And the ball is next on field position when you pick it off deep in their own territory. You've got a general shaken up. Timeout on the field for the injured player as Young goes out and will try to sort things out now. They've had the offensive movement all right, but it's been turnovers that's plagued them. That's the same thing that hurt them against Portland. The defense played excellent against the Portland Breakers last week, giving the offense opportunities. But in trying to establish a running game, the running backs made mistakes. The turnovers popped it up last week. They've done the same thing here. Also seems to me, Keith, that Steve Young is trying to force some passes into his receivers. The receivers are not as open as they thought they might be. All right, but let's go beyond this now. You were a wide receiver. You ran good patterns. You could improvise. I don't see Los Angeles pass receivers running precision routes here. They're, they seem to be curling them off rather than running planting and, and running sharp corners. The reason why they're curling them off is because in the zone coverage of the New Jersey Generals, they are drifting back into those areas. If you run a sharp route, you could be running back into a linebacker that's drifted up underneath you. So the receiver has to come down into his area, and instead of running the hook, he has to run the curl to get in between the seams so that he can be open. Now Hudson, uh, the tight end, has not seen the ball at all today. He threw it toward him one time. It was almost intercepted. No, he hasn't. 56 Dumont, the injured general on the field. Looks like he's all right. He's going to walk off. Got deflated probably as a member of the special team. You see him right there in the center of the, ca of the television. Just getting knocked back. And then the rest of the team just seems to come over. To oh, two people just jump on him. Trying to keep him pinned down. That'll take the air out of you. Yep. From the 26, it is first down. 298! <laughs> Going deep. Gun. Gun cannot get back to the ball. And he's going to holler some. That Ken Johnson shielded him away from normal pursuit of the ball. But well, he Ken, gets no call. Ken Johnson played it very well. Dwayne Gunn went inside to try and get position on the ball because Ken Johnson had the best position. Went inside, tried to go up in the air and take it at the high point. But he misjudged it, could not get up high enough. The ball goes over his head. No call, no pass interference at all on that play. 1.43 to go now, first half. Looks down the middle on that play. Looks for Hudson. Goes instead deep to Gunn. Gunn is at the 45 and down at the 46, and that'll be a Los Angeles first down. In case you're wondering why he's able to have the success here passing the ball, Keith, when he wasn't earlier, it's because the defense for the New Jersey Generals is in their prevent coverage. They don't want the big touchdown. They're giving them more room underneath. Steve Young drops back. He realized this is going to happen. He's patient, patient. He waits for his receiver to open up in the big hole that's created across the middle. Los Angeles with two timeouts remaining. It's now Tampa Bay 17, San Antonio 12. As John Reeves is beginning to crank up now. That's what we've got for you at halftime. We'll have a talk with the USFL Commissioner Harry Usher and look at some highlights from a couple of games last night. For John Reeves, 14 out of 18, 207 yards in the first half for Tampa Bay. So John, who's had a couple of tough outings, is now starting to make his move, it appears. A minute 35 to go in the first half with the Los Angeles first down at their own 46. And they do have in Zendejas one of the best Place kickers and anybody's pro football. But he did miss an extra point. 219! Young scrambling. 
Finally gets it away and overthrows Tanzel. Jojo Tanzel had come across the field and had broken away from the linebacker John Joyce, but Young running for his life just simply couldn't get it to him. And that time, Keith, the receivers did a good job of staying with their routes because the routes were taking quite a bit of time to develop. And as Steve Young saw himself under pressure, used his running ability to scramble to buy that extra time, unfortunately, throwing on the run, he threw it over Townsville's head. They used up 18 seconds on that play. It is second down and 10. 215! 215! He's in good shape. He's hardly puffing. Pressure from the backside. And down he goes, Mike Weddington. Weddington coming from the back door. Runs him down. Big loss on the play. And you've got 118 to go now as Los Angeles hurries to the line of scrimmage without a huddle. Twenty-four. Young gets it off. Ball is caught by Warren. And Kirby Warren is wrestled down at the 40. John Joyce made the hit on him and will bring in the punter. You've got 55 seconds and the clock running now. And I would think New Jersey will be very happy to go to the clubhouse leading 14 to 9. Well, right now they call a timeout. Stop the clock with 56 seconds up there. I keep forgetting Flutie's playing for him now. As long as there's time on the clock, Flutie always thinks he can score. So New Jersey spends a timeout that leaves them two. Georgia Tech today beat North Carolina 57-54 to win the ACC championship. It is the first one ever for Georgia Tech. And I imagine they're dancing around in Atlanta. Keith, they have number 84. Marcus Hackett in there, and also number 24, Terry Daniels. So I, I'm going to assume, Keith, that they're going to try and go in and block this punt, get good field position, well, take the got chance. Ten up there. Ken Johnson, the corner, though, is moving around with Troy West. Now they all get their heads together. It looks like they're going at No pressure. Low kick, though, and uh, Daniel should have some room at the 15. Downfield, Troy West grabs him by the pads and throws him down at the 16. So Jeff Partridge delivers a good punt of 46 yards, and Daniel is able to return it. Only two yards. Right now, let's go to Tim Brent. All right, Keith, I'm with Mr. Flutie, Richard Flutie, and I've got to believe that your stomach's a little bit tighter than maybe Doug's right now. Well, not really. I, I'm pretty used to being excited. I'm just filled to death with all the new wrinkles on the offense. I think if people would get out of their living room and come on out and watch the game, they could really see how pro football can be fun again. Did you know about those new wrinkles before the game? Doug was talking to me before game time, charting out the plays and showing me uh, that excitement. So the offense really has changed somewhat to use his ability to, to scramble. Well, I guess so, and I think that's smart. Are you happy? <laughs> very happy, very happy. If we win, I'll even be happier. <laughs> but he seems to adjust it quite well. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. And we're thrilled to death with the way things are going so far. Did Doug feel the pressure coming into this game, or has it alle alleviated somewhat? Uh, I think uh, each team that's new to them will create a new pressure. But I think overall, the experience has to help them. All right, Mr. Flutie. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Tim. All right, Keith. Richard Flutie. <laughs> From Natick, Mass. He's a pretty good salesman, uh, Commissioner. He's, he's, he did, he did uh, uh, Doug's dad did quite a sales job for you just now, yeah. <laughs> well, he screened all the agents while Doug was in school helping Doug select it. Now he's going to promote them a little bit more. Back he goes to throw on third down and seven. Goes deep with it down the middle. Walker and Herschel can't get to it. Herschel had drawn double coverage and could not break away. Covering Ed Scott and uh, Daryl Patillo. There you saw Herschel Walker's version of a complaint because he felt he was interfered with. And he motioned to the official. Now when he throws the ball, he's not open. But again, Herschel's got great speed. You see him motioning back. He wants a pass interference penalty called. But you throw the ball out there and you try and let Herschel run under it. Flutie has now missed six in a row. And with 17 seconds to play in the first half, 
Rick Partridge is in. New Jersey unable to move the ball. He'll punt it away now. He's having a pretty good day with the foot, except for the one bad snap he couldn't handle and was nailed. Pressure on, gets it off. Must have made contact with the ball. There is now you get a late flag here as Partridge was nailed. But Los Angeles is arguing somebody tipped the ball and Rick Partridge is down on the ground. He really took a lick from John Higgins now, as don't, he came flying in. I don't think this is any play acting on his part. No, no. He's, he, there is no he took foul a, on the play. Yep, they did tip the ball. If you tip the ball and then make contact with the kicker, there is no penalty. We'll see it again. See just who makes the contact. There's the ball right there. The ball must have been tipped. It was Higgins got a piece of it, I think, before he hit the kicker Partridge. So Partridge was stretched out, and he made the hit on him, and uh, down Rick went, and he is still down. It looked like to me like he was holding his hip. The reason why the penalties are so severe for roughing the kick kicker is because of what you see right there. The leg extended. He is so unprotected. That time, in an effort to make the block, wasn't intentional. He was exposed, and now he comes up with an injury. Maybe it's his back area, but he was reaching around his hip a moment ago. You see it again right here. And again, the rule says if you, if you make contact with the ball before you hit the kicker, then you can stretch him out, and that's what they did. But Partridge is up now, walking off the field. Keith, even if he had not made contact with the ball on that play, I don't think they would have called a penalty because he was actually blocked to a degree into the punter. which is also not a penalty if he hits a punter at that, at that point. And the official threw the flag, I think, just as a precaution so that he could double check to make sure he was right in his first impression that it was tipped. Well, Los Angeles has 10 seconds now, and they've got the football at the New Jersey 47. They've got two timeouts. 298! 298! New Jersey playing center field defense. Young's pass to the sidelines is dropped by Dwayne Gunn. Well, he came up in front of Leopold, got in front of Bobby to make the catch, and was simply looking for a place to run before he had control of the missile, and he dropped it. Four seconds to play. Tony Zendejas is going to come in for a man-sized field goal try here. Now, the wind, if you look at the top of the stadium, you say he's kicking into the wind, but it's really not so because it comes down in here and swirls around, so he may get a little help from it. It'll be a 65-yard field goal try. He bangs it. Whoa, just short. Just short. He got about 63 yards on it, and it came up about two or three, maybe four yards short of the goal post. So the first half is over in a 14-9 New Jersey lead over the Los Angeles Express. We'll have the commissioner, Harry Usher, after the half, this message and the word from our local station on Steve Young in the first half, but he's going to have to watch the New Jersey offense for a while before he gets the ball again because Los Angeles will be kicking off and this man will be handling the ball, Doug Flutie. The deep people for New Jersey are Rod Pegues, 30, and Donnell Daniel, 23s, and Dejas will kick it away for Los Angeles. 14-9, New Jersey leads. Good high hanging kick. Goal line for Pegues. Oh, got a big hole. And breaks it out across the 35 to the 38-yard line. So Pegues runs it back 38 yards before Grambling's Ed Scott brings him down. And the generals start out with good field position. Second down. Walker gets a good block from Carthen, but can't get around the corner as there's good pursuit by Andy Mellentree, number 52. And the gain is up across the 40, close to the 42. He also gets a good block from Harris. So take a look, number 33, Maurice Coffin is a man that's out in front of him, the lead blocker, as we told you earlier, on his way to the New York Giants. But it's not going to stop Carthen from playing his best football. He just said that he has no animosity towards the team. He just 
Giants offered him a better contract. That's all there is to it. They go to the shotgun. Flutie <laughs> wanted to go deep. Does now. And he's got Collins. Cannot get it. Collins had turned the other way, but more importantly, he had turned Wyman Henderson all the way around. Henderson did not know where the ball was, and then Ferris couldn't get back to it. He turned him around, and when he released the ball, Keith, he threw it high, yep. which gave Clarence enough time to judge where the ball was going and turn around and make a play on the ball. Doug Flutie had to see all that open field and decided to take a chance. What he didn't see, however, was number 81, Jeff Speck, his tight end, breaking wide open across the middle. Rick Partridge all right now after being clobbered a little while ago. He's in the punt. Ball is fielded by Gunn at the 26. And he's run down at the 27. Hey, look at, look at that. So now Steve Young will go to work after that 32-yard punt with pretty good field position for the Los Angeles Express. Los Angeles Express now going to work from their 27. Their first offensive possession. Houston has jumped out to a 14-0 lead over Oakland as Jim Kelly has thrown a 74-yard touchdown pass. 219! Young will throw on first down. Goes to the short man Townsell. Townsell, the wide receiver. Over 110 yards passing and two touchdowns. On three offensive plays? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. Here's the hit. Oh, boy. Ed. He took it on the knee. Just short of the first down, as you can see. At 11.43 to go in the third quarter, they're still working on Dwayne Gunn. Dwayne Gunn took a helmet on the left knee, and that's bad news, and the Los Angeles receiver core is not heavily populated as it is. It was a solid blow, and uh, the helmet went right down on that left knee, and he's on his way to the clubhouse on the x-rays. Terry Justin, number 26, John Preston, 25, Gregory Johnson, 27, and Ken Johnson, 32, all through the first half have been inflicting a great deal of punishment on the people carrying the ball. They've taken the game to those receivers on the physical basis. 298! This is Kirby Warren, cuts it over right tackle, and picks up the first down. So he needed about a half a foot for the first down, and he's got the first down. Inside the 35, they've marked it at the 33. Next week, we'll be following the Flutie Show down to Baltimore, where they will play the Baltimore Stars, and that will be an interesting time for a lot of people to have a chance to look at the defending champions and see what's going on with them. They are 0-2-1. 219! 219! Little draw with Warren carrying, and he looks pretty good. He's inside the 20 and down to the 17. You know what? One, one he's fresh because he hasn't played. Two, he may be just a half a step quicker than uh, some people might have expected. And four, he's playing it more like a fullback as opposed to play it. Not trying to hit the fancy moves, using his strength. A good low running position, Keith. So he's got all of his weight, all, his all of his momentum forward and working for him. Three carries, 31 yards, and Los Angeles has a first down at the New Jersey 17. 215! 215! he got it again. Around the corner he goes. And picks up what appears to be a first down near the five. So a fellow who probably didn't have any idea he was going to get a chance to play this much, he may be turning out to be a star. Number 25, John Preston, the strong safety, also just limped up to the sideline. The trainers are working on him, Keith. John Hadle. John doesn't say much during the ball game. He lets the assistant coaches who put a game plan, as uh, Preston going away, but he lets the other coaches who put the plan together do most of the work. Warren now, 42 yards on four carries and four first downs. 215! 
Well, when you got a hot hand, play it, right? From the five on first and goal, he hits it down near the two. Stop by Ken Johnson. Just a quick hitting play straight up the middle. Jim LeClaire, number 55, the left inside linebacker, looked like he was coming through the stunt on the play. Puts Bodie back in there. Now, Bodie is a, is a strong blocker. And uh, with Warren moving the ball the way he's moving it, I expect uh, we'll see him carry it again right here. With Bodie leading. 398! 398! Dives. They've called it touchdown. Well, the general spun him around at the top of the stack, but he got enough of the plane to the goal line, and he's in there for the PD at 9.22 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a look at it from our side angle. The official at the top of the field didn't call it, but the official at the bottom did. You see him dive, go over. He's there. He's there. You see the ball right there over the line. So Kirby Warren leads the drive down the field as L.A. goes to a 15-14 lead and they're going for two. The Express is for two points. Taking a chance, trying to make up for the missed extra point earlier. He's got O'Neal in the end zone if he doesn't get tackled. Now he's lost O'Neal. Now it goes the other way, and it is good. No, it is not good. Didn't hold on, I don't think, long and, enough. And the flag is thrown also, Keith. Kirby Warren, the man who scored the touchdown, keyed the drive for the LA Express. Well, standing, he was the primary receiver. I'm going to call pass interference, I think. There's a foul on the play. That is wrong. That's no foul. Number 23, Red. Be a on the so it is called good. It's called and good Donnell catch. Daniel is called for a personal foul. For a personal foul. The ball popped out, but they ruled that he had control of it. Therefore, he gets the two points. You see, he's looking for Kirby 49 right there. He's under some pressure. He was, Kirby wasn't open. Now he starts to scramble. Looking for someone. He's got people who are breaking open, but under the pressure, he can't find him. Kirby's waving his arms. Young finally finds him, and he makes a catch. Now, let's see where the foul comes into play. 23 Daniels, he makes a catch. Hits him right in the face, and I think that's what the official called. So, eight plays, 73 yards. And uh, the Los Angeles Express now will go back into a three-point lead. And uh, the foul being assessed on the kickoff. Danielle Daniel, number 23, was the man who came in to replace the injured strong safety, John Preston, <coughs> excuse me, number 25, who limped off to the sideline on one of the plays in this LA Express drive to a touchdown. We it didn't appear, though, there was any intent on the play. Uh, to me, it's hard to tell. I'm, I'm 100 yards away from it. But. The intent, Keith, is, is not what you call on a play like that. The fact that he did make a hit to the head is what he's calling, whether he intended to or not. And Los Angeles will kick off from the 50. Wonderson Dejas will squib it, or if he'll kick it away. How about an onside kick? Tony. No, no. kicks it away so it'll come out to the 20 I imagine what he had in mind though was to get it up high well he got it up high but he had much too much carry now we'll take another look at the uh, two points conversion try here see Steve Young all kinds of time scrambling away and receivers out here are usually taught to run back to the passer when they're scrambling but Kirby's just open and was waving his arms. He said, oh, oh that's punch. a punch. That was oh, just yeah. a punch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now you see it from that <laughs> <Now>. angle. <laughs> from the 20, first down. Flutie back to throw it. Down the sideline for Walker, incomplete. You talk about a mismatch. 
David Howard, the right side linebacker for Los Angeles, had the challenge of covering Herschel Walker going down the field. And he had an angle and played him very, very well. But without the angle, who we, as Flutie now has thrown, he's missed eight in a row. Well, he just played that very well on technique because, as you stated, he does not have the foot speed to stay with Herschel Walker. And he angled him towards the sideline, used that sideline as a second defender. And it's second and ten. Walker with the ball. Cuts it back against the grain. And Herschel just keeps on rumbling out across the 30 and picks up a first down. That's a tough run. That is a tough run. Herschel is not the most fluid running back you're ever going to see. His obvious assets are his strength and his, and his, his speed, not necessarily his quickness. Here, he reads his blocking very well. You see, he's not running instinctively but he's powering his way downfield for the yardage. That's his longest run of the year, 13 yards. Flutie on a roll on first down. Looks deep, nobody there. And will take it out of bounds. So he picks up about five when he could find no one open downfield. A moment with Steve Young. Tim Brandt talks to him. All right, Keith, I was going to ask him what adjustments you made, but it looked like you were just executing on that last drive and doing the same things. Yeah, we've, it's been the same way all three games so far. As we come out lackluster, not making the right plays, the right reads. Come out second half, we do what we're supposed to. It's easy. John Joyce said they were trying to give you a lot of different looks, a lot of movement and overloading on one side. Has that caused problems? Not really. They haven't done anything different than they've done before, but it's just a matter of going down and doing the things we know we have to, what we have to do. All right, so Keith. And Flutie hands it to Carthen, and Carthen is held up at the line of scrimmage and finally wrestled down as he crosses to the 42. Timmy, I would be a little curious about Kirby Warren seeing his first action uh, today. He's turned out to be quite a story. He really has, and he's, he's executed extremely well. Steve, we're talking about Kirby Warren. He is really playing well. He's doing great. Uh, you know, Mel Gray's had a little trouble holding on the ball, and Kirby and everyone's... We just haven't executed. Now Kirby comes in and does a great job. Tell me about just before the half, four seconds left. Instead of the Hail Mary, you went for a 64-yard field goal. What was the logic? I don't know. I didn't make that decision. I can't tell you, so. All right, Keith. <laughs> Third down and two. Short two. They're going to throw it. Flutie's going to scramble, and he's short of the first down. He gets back to the 41. He was looking for a quick one to Walker. Couldn't find him. Speck was down the middle, but... Los Angeles had nine people up there on that line. There were just too many to handle. Well, he's taking a chance. Everyone's anticipating the run. Walt Michael showing that he's willing to open up his offense and take some chances with the faking the run, the little play action pass. Doug Flutie showing he's not afraid to get in and mix it up. Just ran straight ahead, thought he could pick it up. But the defense of the Express played it very, very well. JoJo Townsell now has gone deep under the punt. First time today he's been back there. Wayne Gunn, of course, hurt, injured knee and out of the ball game. That snap is low, but uh, Rick Partridge handles it all right, and Townsell makes a fair catch at the 24-yard line. At six minutes and 50 seconds to play in the third quarter, L.A. with the ball and the express lead by three. Here's Kirby Warren out of Pacific. Activated for one game last year, but he showed some flashes that the coaches liked. They decided to keep him, and he's been a big gun today. He's got 298. 298. On first down, Young to throw. As a man on the sideline, the pass is incomplete. The pass intended for Leroy Campbell, who is in the lineup replacing Dwayne Gunn. And speaking of Gunn, uh, let's check in with Tim for the latest word on it. All right, Keith, they've been working on Dwayne since they brought him over to the sidelines. You saw the collision and heard the hit, and it they feared at first that he had torn a lateral ligament. But instead, now they really strongly feel that it is just a strain ligament and that he may be back in two weeks, certainly out the rest of the day. But I talked to him, and he said the pain has subsided somewhat, and he's very, very optimistic about the knee situation. But right now, it appears to be a strained ligament. Well, that's uh, if there is good news out of the circumstance, that is good news. Here's a little delay to Warren, and Warren breaks out of there. Kirby Warren goes across the 40 and out to a first down at the 41. 
doors are an opportunity is open for this young man Keith and he's taking advantage of it he's not doing anything fancy and he's getting some great blocking by the offensive line right now he's got a big hole up the middle not too fancy just running straight ahead one of the things however Keith because he has not played much I'd look and check on his conditioning to see just how tired he's getting throughout this ball game 63 yards on seven carries. 215! 215! Got it again, and this time, number 75, it looked like, read it just right, Frank Mattias. And Bill Noe was Byrne and Woodland. Byrne and Woodland, 74 and 71. Jim Byrne read that very well, came in, made a great form tackle, stopped him just beyond the line of scrimmage and then helps from a few of his friends. Tom Woodland, the small guy, only at 270. <laughs> Crowd's working on their wave. It's not particularly efficient. Too many shows in front of it today. They'll have it worked out by the title game. 215! <laughs> Second down and nine. That's Hudson. And Hudson's inside the 25, fighting for more. Look out, hang on to the ball, Gordon. And he's down around the 23. They were trying to hit that same pass earlier in the ball game in the first half. He went to it a couple of times. They did not get it. But this time, going to his old teammate from BYU, Steve Young connects for the completed pass. Now, this is a great pass. It's... <laughs> It gets there, but you see, it's not exactly a tight spiral. Now, here's the dangerous thing right here. He's fighting for a little extra yard. See how loose that ball is? Oh, yeah. And with the way the secondary's been hitting today, that's something he should not do. Call it just the, a little extra caution. Call 215. it the 24-yard line. 215! 215 is the running back. Modi wants to throw, does throw. Penalty flag down past Clark by Hudson for what appears to be a first down, but let's check the penalty flag. <laughs> might have had somebody move it. Hudson is hoping it's on the other team. But it's against the offense. Bodie replacing Warren for the play and throwing the pass. And Hudson opened for him and he hit him. Now Hudson's limping a little bit after that last struggle over here on the near side. A turnaround of things today for Los Angeles. Young has run on only two Illegal of 49 motion. plays. Offense, number 85, still first down. That cost him five yards, so it'll be first down and 15 as the ball comes back near the 29. Let's go I left. That was Kenny O'Neill. Saber was coming into the ball game to replace Dwayne Gunn. Two fifteen. They give it to Warren and Bobby Leopold penetrating outside linebacker. Got his leg as he went by. But the momentum of Warren still carries him ahead for a decent gain on the play. Now yeah, Bobby was able just to pop him, get him off balance a little bit. And he got up to the line. It was 96 James Lockett and 71 Tom Wilton who were there waiting for him. It'll be second down at about 14. It's done. 298. 298. Got a man, and Townsell makes the catch at the 11-yard line. It'll be a first down for Los Angeles. He caught the ball in front of Ken Johnson. Well, that time Townsell was able to drive Johnson off the line of scrimmage deep into the end zone. 55, Leclerc is up on the outside from his linebacker position, but the ball is just thrown over his head. Townsell comes back and makes a catch. That was 53, Bobby Leopold, who was underneath. So the Express now leading 17-14, and they're working at the New Jersey 11, it's young done. 10 out of 21. 219! 219! Kirby Warren. That time coming up out of the secondary, Donnell Daniel, and he leveled him. Kirby Warren, stopped by Donnell Daniel. Well, he had Hart out there in front of him. 
Jeff Hart has position here to make a block. A locket goes by him. You see the linebacker right there. You see number 23 coming up. Donnell Daniel fighting through the crowd, makes a hit, and the officials have to learn to move on the sideline. Drop those yard markers and get out of the way. Ball is at the eight-yard line, second down, seven. 298! In the corner, Townsell, touchdown! He got in front of Johnson, and Young drilled him right on the numbers. Here's where they miss Jerry Holmes. That, that's true, because Jerry Holmes is, is easily the best one-on-one -on -one coverage man for the New Jersey Generals. But this time, Young scrambling. Tom Zales is running parallel just in front of Johnson and right there. Good hard pass. He protects the ball, stays in bound. Young delivering that pass very close to the sideline, so it's likely that being intercepted. With low. Wayne Jones snaps it. Jeff Partridge puts it down, and Tony Zendejas drills it through the uprights. And it's 24-14 Los Angeles. Another look at the touchdown. We'll take another look. The running ability of Steve Young comes into play here. Scrambling, buying time. Jojo Townsell has his confidence, working against number 32, Ken Johnson. And it's another score for the LA Express. 133 to play in the third quarter. Joe Townsell, who had caught only three passes in the two previous games, has five today, including a touchdown. So he's having a big day in front of a crowd of 58,741 at Giant Stadium. Agony's on Walt Michaels now as his team is down by 10 with 133 to play in the third quarter. Los Angeles coming in 0-2. And they had the next boat. Came in this ball game looking for two things, a win and an owner. Yeah. Zendejas' kick goes to the goal line to Pegues. Pegues had a big return the last time, and he's got another one. Works it out to the 29, close to the 30-yard line before they finally bring him down. So they've got pretty good field position to go to work with. Down by 10. There's your attendance, 58-7-41. So Donald Trump was pretty close. He said 60. Good crowd. Beautiful day. Ooh. First down for the Generals, their own 29. Or if you like, close to the 30. And Flutie quickly to Collins. And Collins pays for it, but he hangs on. Wyman Henderson, who's starting his 34th consecutive game today, came up and nailed him. But Clarence locked it down, and the gain is six. Oh, Henderson was laying back on this particular play. You see him looking in at the quarterback in his zone coverage. As soon as the ball's thrown, he starts to come up. Collins did a good job of protecting the football. Walker. For the first down and he may be just short he had to get to the 40 just near the 40. carson howard mark's pretty close there's a time uh, remaining in the third quarter and they may want to measure this one we must give credit to the defensive line of los angeles they've done an excellent job all afternoon of keeping herschel walker and maurice carson tied down in the running attack and very close to that line of scrimmage, not letting them get downfield much at all. <laughs> well, I had to try it. You go to uh, over there and look at Cresta and it's uh, Sam Rich. You got to try it once. I was young. Flutie he turns on third and inches and gives it to the big man Carson and Maurice slams over the right side and gets the first down. Keith, that's a good example of what we were saying that L.A. can't do as the clock ticks down for the end of the third period. The USFL on ABC, L.A. 24, New Jersey 14. And we will continue after this message and a word from our local station. Here comes New Jersey now. First down. The ball at their own 42. Trailing by 10. Split the backs. Carthen and Walker. Flutie takes off. And 
does his hook slide, but still takes a hit from David Howard as he goes down. And he's got a first down for New Jersey at the Los Angeles 46. And very fortunate for Los Angeles that the defensive line applied the pressure and forced him out of the pocket to run because number 82, Clarence Collins, was all by himself on the far sideline. Moody has run six times today and picked up 68 yards and scored a touchdown. Runs away from pressure and then misses his target. Number 75, George Achika, almost got him. Sherry Young is the mother of the young man who quarterbacks the LA Express, Steve Young. She's now with Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, equal time. We talked to Richard Flutie in the first half, Jerry Young here in the second half. Now, you said that uh, Steve was very nervous this morning. He seemed very relaxed when we talked to him prior to the game. <laughs> well, I think that he tells parents probably more than he tells everybody else. But, uh, of course, he was. And, and this game means a lot because they've lost two games. And if they can win it, everything gets back on track, and that would be nice. That was bothering Steve, wasn't it? They 0-2 really put a lot of pressure on him. Well, of course. And Steve's the kind of a kid that uh, takes a lot of responsibility on himself, whether it's his responsibility or not and uh, he loves these guys he'd like to see them play and he knows they're exciting it was a fun ball game and he'd like to see them do better so that people would recognize that steve was saying that you had become a ticket manager this week and over 100 people here yes well at least about 150 actually uh, people started calling me and saying how do you get tickets and it just kind of snowballed and and so we got them tickets and they're here and and the high school uh, already had gotten their own they have a, a good 50 people i think here so. well steve's playing well good luck the rest of the year thank you very much all right sure up to you keith uh, sherry i'd ask for a commission <laughs> one completion for flutie now in the last 11 attempts los angeles putting the pressure on him he gets out into the open field and he is brought down by howard carson but he's got another first down Picks up the first down. Carson almost caused the fumble that time, Keith. Doug Flutie saw the big open area in the center of the field. Created because all of his receivers are running deep routes down the field. He doesn't hesitate. Takes off after pump faking. But again, he's holding the ball in one hand. And watch Carson right there. Ball pops up. He's lucky to be able to grab it and hold on to it. But he did in his first down at the Los Angeles 31. L.A. leading by 10. Fourth quarter of play, it's Carson. And he's wrestled down at about the 27 with Carson leading the attackers defensively, 13-20 to play in the ball game. And Charles Hussery. They've got to score twice. Might be our first overtime. Houston Gamblers, 14. Possible, but not likely. I like the element of two-point conversion, Joe. That, that is a... Sally! Can be very significant, and uh, particularly in this ball game, where Los Angeles was able to effectively complete one. To lead by three instead of just one. Ludy gets it away to Bowers, and Sam Bowers is clobbered by Howard Carson. Melantree it was. Melantree, and it's Melantree that's not getting up. He laid a lick on Big Sam Bowers, and Andy is down on the field, and it's first down New Jersey at the 15. Well, we'll, we'll take a look at the reason why I'm not playing football anymore. So I didn't want to take these kind of shots, but Sam Bowers, he takes a big one and hangs on to the football. Melantree comes in, gets right under his head, his headgear, right at the base of the neck. He pops him, levels him. But watch who gets up and who doesn't get up. You see his legs just buckle, but Andy Mellantree goes down to the ground and he won't get up. Seems like somewhat of a delayed reaction, Keith. Yeah, he got his bell rung. He's coming off walking now. Inbound. He's okay right there. At Denver Portland game, it's now 23 10 Denver in the fourth quarter. Run and shoot. Knight and Collins are the wide people for New Jersey on first down at the L.A. 15. Walker cuts it to the 11. I thought for a minute Herschel might have the halfback pass in mind. He has thrown it once in a while. 
Hers so. Herschel always looks to, no, I shouldn't say always, but very often when he runs that sweep, he is looking downfield for a place to run, trying to read his blockers, and it makes it look like he's going to throw the football. They had a record crowd today at San Antonio, 21,822, but the home team's getting licked. And there's the score we just gave you. A little over 17,000 in Denver today. And Flutie back, getting pressure. Runs away from it. And scores! for 95 yards now and two touchdowns and Roger Rusek for the extra point oh snaps high Partridge got it down and it's good they go well it's the Flutie show huh? they go for the one if it's magic and Doug Flutie is a magician with all the sleight of hand again he fakes it to Herschel again a naked bootleg but what you've got to respect him He's going to throw the football just when he stops. Now, this time, he wisely tucked the ball away and turns into a pure runner, picks up some blocks downfield, scores the touchdown. This causes so many problems, the unpredictability of a scrambling passer when he's got everybody working on his side, working in the area where he has his talent. No lineman rushing downfield. They're staying back, holding the blocks in case he, in case he throws the football. And it's now 24-21, a three-point Los Angeles lead. Well, they call him the little general around here. <laughs> Remember Jack McNeil said uh, during his college career, I'd love to see him with the ball. I don't care what he does. Whatever he does, I'm going to like. High <laughs> <laughs> kickoff to Bodie at the three. Gets a crack to the 30-31. Well, here again is a look at Flutie's touchdown gamble, his second of the day. He knows no fear at this point. Uh, he shouldn't have any fear. But the people who should have frustrations at defensive line, although they've done a good job most of the afternoon, this always gets to you when you've got a guy trapped and he just eludes you. He scrambles, runs around, and takes what looks like a bad play and scores six points. He's even learned to spike. Not bad. Not bad. So watch out for the ones that bounce back in your face mask. <laughs> Call it to 32. And Young drops. Flips it out. Gordon Hudson, the tight end. And Hudson gets up to the 38. Picked up seven yards, eight to six yards on the carry. Gordon Hudson was back there blocking Keith. And someone slipped by him. And as they did, Steve Young felt the pressure. He just released to the outside, and Steve dumped it to him almost without looking. 24-21 ball game. 10-15 to play in the game. He's done! 215! 215! corner and a first down as he reaches the New Jersey 49. You would think now, I know by now, that uh, 215 is a running play. Well, I don't think that was a running play called at the line of scrimmage. I think he just called that number off. No. Oh. Very well. I'm not sure, you can, <laughs> but I doubt very seriously whether 215 was a running play. I bet you. down Los Angeles 298 298 the up close man Bodie gets the ball and Bodie punches his way for four down to the 45 Texas Tech has defeated Arkansas to win the Southwest Conference basketball championship 67 64 
Keith, the reason why I don't believe those were plays called at the line of scrimmage is because when you said 215, 15 would be a play that would be run off tackle or in that area. A nine-hole play would be an outside sweep. Second down, Two six. 215! Well, it's a running play again with Warren carrying, and a penalty flag goes into the stack as he's close to a first down, but it was indeed a different kind of running play. Of course, if you want to talk about tendencies, that's going to go against Los Angeles. Looks like he's getting ready to grab the old wrist for the holding call. If you want to talk about tendencies, the number one tendency for the LA Express at this point is that Kirby Warren will be carrying the football. Yep. Why not? Just activated yep. into his first game. And, and having a big one. It's a big penalty, too. Ted Humphrey, the referee. Holding. Okay. Number 88. Still second down. Whoa. His old BYU partner. Gary Hudson. He just got caught that one time. That's okay. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, it is second down and 10. LA's been flagged three times for 25 yards. New Jersey, three flags, 35 yards. 298! 298! <laughs> Young's pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Number 90, Freddie Gilbert, came in from his right end position. They're trying to set up a little flare screen. Big Freddy got his hands up. He's 6'4. He's able to tip the ball away. This might be a considerable play in this ball game. The whole scheme of things. 8.50 to play. 24-21. Third down and 10. Wayne Gunn out with an injured knee. It's not. at the 47 of Los Angeles. It was James Lockett celebrating going off the field. James Lockett, we haven't mentioned his name a lot in the course of the afternoon, but he is doing, doing a very Illegal good job. Illegal formation, offense, and leaves the crime. Brings up fourth down. He's that is good. the 14th sack of the season on Steve Young. I, I think part of it is due to the fact, Keith, as we mentioned at the early part of the ball game, he starts to scramble. He starts to run yep. into the pocket. People are collapsing all around him. Jeff Partridge in the punt. Donnell Daniel deep for New Jersey. General's going to get the ball and trail by three with a lot of time. Good kick. At the 12. And down at the 22. So it's a 41-yard punt, about a 10-yard return. The generals will go to work from their own 22. Two pretty good football teams right there hooked up today. Houston and Oakland with the Gamblers on top 14 to 7. And Denver, fourth quarter now, 23-17 over the Portland Breakers. They had a crowd of over 17,000 today. And uh, they had offered this, that if you'd come buy a ticket you don't like what you see, then you can go down and with your ticket stub and get your money back. It'll be interesting to see how many folks do that, especially if they win. If they <laughs> lose, now look out. All right, here comes New Jersey. First down, trailing by three points. 8-10 to play in the game. Oh, what happened? Well, there There's was plenty of time left. Start too soon. Ball start. Offense. Number 64. Still first Wayne down. Harris. The big maroon from Mississippi State. So that's five yards. And instead of first and ten, it's now first and fifteen as the ball comes back to the 17. Those kind of little mistakes can be very expensive. Ooh. 
Walker. Gang tackled at the 19. They might give him the 20. Eddie, of course, Eddie Weaver and uh, Herschel Walker were teammates on the Georgia Bulldog teams under Vince Dooley and were members of that national championship team. Second down, about 12. Looney's pass to Collins. He's out of bounds. Got a first down. At the New Jersey 47-yard line, he beat Troy West and Wyman Henderson. It was Henderson, the man who had the responsibility on that corner. And Collins turned it inside and Flutie threw a perfect pass. This was the best pass I've seen Doug Flutie throw on a straight drop back pass. Steps into the pocket, has good position, and look, a perfect strike on the sideline to Collins, to Chris Collins. Walker. Herschel's a searcher. And he gets about to midfield. Daryl Fatillo, first man to get to it. Uh, number 76 is Ben Rudolph. And Doug Flutie came up to try and give Herschel a little help for the block. He hit Ben Rudolph and bounced right back off of him. Yeah, but Ben's one of those big guys that's been chasing Flutie all day. He had him out here in the open field, and uh, Flutie just tied him up and ran right by him. Second and seven. The Los Angeles Express were playing in a man-to-man -man coverage. Number 33, Dwight Drain was a man covering Sam Bowers. You see the blitz. You see the linebackers inside coming in. Number 75 is George Achika. They're putting pressure, chasing Flutie out of the pocket. But he throws maybe better on the run than he does when he's dropping straight back. He has a hand in his face. He still finds Sam Bowers, who comes up with a good catch. First down for the general. Walker over the left side to the 30 for a couple of yards. And there's a final score. Tampa beats San Antonio 31-18 as John Reeves goes 25 of 31 for 298 yards and three touchdowns. John Hadle pacing uneasily with only a three-point lead and the New Jersey Generals have fire under their seats going in on this drive. Well, if they get it in the end zone, they will can assume a four, or if they go for two, a five-point lead, forcing Los Angeles to score a touchdown. Second down from the 29. Flutie's still got it. Into the end zone for Collins, and it's knocked away. And almost caught on the rebound. Jeff Speck almost caught the ricochet. <laughs> A little magic by Doug Flutie and a little juggling act by his receivers. Number 47, Troy West. Number 33, Dwight Drains were back there on the coverage. The free safety, Troy West from USC and Drain from Oklahoma. Both safeties back there on the coverage. Flutie was giving his receivers a chance to make the catch. They were fairly well covered. He threw it high. Clarence Collins tries to come back and make the catch. He has a chance, but now you see him bobbling it. And number 47, Troy West comes over to knock it away. Speck even touched it, but couldn't get a handle. So it is third down and seven. Little flip ahead to Harmon, and Clarence Harmon goes down to the 10-yard line. Walt Michaels has got a grin all over his face. Well, Walt, you might have something on your hands here. A little magic. Doug Flutie. He's got a lot of linemen out in front of him, blocking, clearing the way. To push Eddie Weaver out. Linebacker steps in. Now that's Carson. He can't make the play. Just flips it to the outside. You know what it is, Warner? He has a sense. 
extraordinary sense of, of where people Instinctive are in football. play. Yep. He just feels what's going on. Carthen. And Carthen is down to the five, maybe the three, and one of the officials gets caught in the pile, the umpire. And he's all right. While the New Jersey Dunes are moving this ball, keep in mind, they're doing it using up the clock. The clock is stopped right now. The official starts it again. They're ticking off those precious moments, and as it ticks down, it makes it a little bit more difficult for John Hadel to try and bring his team back should they score. It is second down from the four. Walker. Herschel muscles his way to about the two. They can get a first down. Inside the one. Clock shows 3.30 and counting now. As Flutie looks to the sidelines and Speck will bring a play in. And that's just fine with Walt Michaels. After using up a lot of magic with Doug Flutie, some gadget plays. Right now, inside the five-yard line, he can rely on the ability of his two running backs, Maurice Carthen and Herschel Walker, and his offensive line firing it out. He can play very safe here and use more of that clock. conservative but that was a conservative play for the New Jersey Generals this afternoon on this play Keith when Doug Flutie fakes the handoff and rolls out he does such an excellent job of the fake that number 22 Wyman Henderson doesn't even see him when he rolls out Los Angeles had a 10-point lead the Generals have come storming back here in the fourth quarter they lead by three. The kick is good. They lead by four. With two minutes and 57 seconds to play in the ball game. You'll see it right here. Doug Flutie playing loose, relaxed. You see the fake right here to Herschel. Now look at the top of the screen. Wayne Harris is blocking. Wyman Henderson, 22. He never saw Doug Flutie. Nine plays, 97 yards, and the third touchdown for Doug Flutie. at the Flutie touchdown. Get a chance to see the offensive lineman doing an excellent job. Again, this is a ninth rushing play for Doug Flutie. 97 yards and his third touchdown. Unconventional. And it works. Ruzek to kick off. Bodie and Alexander deep. 2 5 6 on the clock. Bodie at the two. Trying to go the other way. And can't do it. They'll mark him out close to the 20. So Steve Young and company looking at 80 plus yards. out near the 32. They've got three timeouts. Young throwing on first down. And gets it away. And it is picked off by Terry Justin. Headed for the corner. Touchdown. Two-yard interception return by Kerry Justin. The ball was late getting there, and Justin was in the right place at the right time. He's throwing like a short flag route. The ball is right there on the sideline. Justin just waits, stands back, picks it off. The ball is intended for Leroy Campbell, and Justin, who had been close to a couple of those plays early in the ball game, was watching Steve Young the entire time. As soon as he cocked his arm and let it fly, Kerry Justin 
came flying up from his corner position, picked it off, and all the way into the end zone. Ruzek for the try after, and it's good. So, the New Jersey Generals now with an 11-point lead and 2 minutes and 12 seconds to play in the ball game, and I would imagine John Hadle feels like he's been gut shot because that interception happened right in front of him. Right in front of him. Still enough time on the clock for his team to march down the field, and his team has been playing well here in the second half, Keith. They put together two very good drives to score points uh, in, the, in the third quarter, and you thought that, well, maybe they were pulling themselves together. They might pull this one out. Well, it's a new adventure for that young man. In fact, both of them. For Steve Young to be involved in ball games and not be on the plus side and pulling him out late. And Flutie has run today for 97 yards and scored three touchdowns. Fourth quarter, it's now Denver 30, Portland 17. Two minutes to go in that ball game. So Denver's about to roll up another win. Impressive numbers. Had big numbers last week over Birmingham and have scored 30 against Portland today. Ruzak will kick it to Alexander and Bodie. And from here on, the Generals can come out now and start playing center field. They will. I think Roger Ruzak, since his kickoff team is covered very well, will probably just go ahead and kick it deep as opposed to the squib kick. Very high. Not too long. Bodie about the 10. Down at the 22. Again, Tim Brandt with Maurice Carthen. All right, Keith, I'm still here with Maurice, and we've been talking. Maurice, let me ask you first about the contract situation. You signed with the Giants this past week. Are you more relaxed now? Is it a burden off your shoulders? It's just like a big relief now. All that's behind me now, and I can concentrate on the football now. How about incentive? And is it an extra incentive to, to prove to these people in New York that you're going to also finish out this year playing as hard as you can? Yeah, I'm going to play hard as I can. I don't want to let up no time. I'm playing with the Generals right now, and I think what I'm going to do play ball. Does a future contract ever, uh, the injuries ever come back in your mind? You worry about anything like that? No, I'm not worried about injuries. I think if you go out and play hard and hit people, you should stay away from injuries. All right, Mark. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Keith? John Hadle now talking to his quarterback, Steve Young, as we come to the two-minute mark. Two minutes to play in the football game, and New Jersey out on top now by 11. Well, the heat zone, it was a fourth-quarter letdown against the Houston Gamblers with just over nine minutes to play in the ball game. Uh, Houston came back to beat Los Angeles 34-33 after they were down 33-13. So it's a fourth quarter letdown today and New Jersey has bombed away. Working out of the shotgun and the New Jersey defense on deep drops. They go the short route to Townsell. He gets a first down as he crosses the 35-yard line. At halftime, Houston has moved out to a 21-7 lead over Oakland. Jim Kelly, 17 out of 25 passes for 251 yards at halftime. And we've got a Los Angeles man down on the field, Derek Kennard. They've already lost Dwayne Gunn today to injury. And now it is Kennard down on the field, their left guard. Once again, a reminder... It would seem here that New Jersey is going to win this football game with an 11-point lead, and they're looking at that knee again. So we'll go down to College Park, Maryland next Sunday here on ABC for our USFL presentation. The Generals against the Baltimore Stars, who are off to a wobbly start, 0-2-1. And, and it looked like Baltimore, well, they had a 13-0 lead over Memphis. Memphis came back to win the ball game 21-19. Kennard's now up and walking off the field. And if I remember, they had a 17-0 lead over Oakland. Oakland came storming back to tie them, and they played an overtime without scoring in that game. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see the Baltimore Stars next Sunday against the New Jersey Generals. It'll be interesting to see what Vince Gibson, the Vince Gordon, uh, not Vince Gibson, uh, mm, Tobin, Vince Tobin decides to do against Flutie. First down, Los Angeles, the ball near the 36 as Steve Young goes again the sideline route. The pass is caught. Do they give it to him? Townsell trying to get both his feet down, and he could not do it. This is, must have made a very quick call. 
on that play. There are two officials that were right there on the sideline to see it. He's been going to the sidelines quite a bit, and you see the cornerback here coming up. He got a little bit of a jump on it. Oh, but it's a very well-thrown ball. There's a catch. That's very close, very close. Second and ten. Young down the middle with it to Tamzell. Shakes a tackler, keeps fighting to the 40. Remember, inside of the two-minute mark in each half now, the clock stops while the chains are moved. And Los Angeles going without a huddle. Those first two passes were on the sideline so they could get out of bounds, but the secondary was overplaying the sideline. Now the middle will be open. That's why they went down the middle to JoJo on that play for the big yardage. They didn't have the change down. The referee hadn't wound the clock. So now they place the ball again. Townsell has caught eight for 118 yards and a touchdown. First down, Young gets pressure from the backside. And the ball is knocked loose. He's hit, and the ball is knocked loose, and New Jersey's got it, and that'll do it. It was Freddie Gilbert that ran him down and knocked the ball out of his hands. And Mike Weddington covers the loose football, and the New Jersey Generals have just won this ball game. We saw a couple of times where Doug Flutie, carrying the ball with one hand, almost lost it. That time, Freddie Gilbert just came in and intentionally went for the football because he had it in one hand and knocked it away but there's an injured player another express football player down on the field well, they don't have that many wide receivers on their roster and uh, they've lost gun for a couple of weeks probably and i can't tell who this is i think it's one of the linemen that's down over there keith got the trainer and team doctor Corrected score now out of Denver. It is 29 to 17 with a minute to play. Denver leading 29, not 30. Freddie Gilbert from Georgia. We'll take a look at the play now. He's number 90. You see him being blocked there at the top of the screen. Now watch Steve Young as he runs the balls in one hand and watch Freddie Gilbert reach out. Just go for the football and his right arm comes around to make the tackle to make sure if he doesn't get the football, he at least brings Steve down. And then, well, there are more LA Express players back there, but that was number 52, Mike Weddington, that jumped on the loose football, recovering it for New Jersey. New Jersey defense now with seven sacks today, minus 61 yards lost. They're both team marks for them. But it's been turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. It's been haunting Los Angeles all season. They've had four today. And the man coming off the field, being carried off the field, is Big Jeff Hart, the veteran out of Oregon State, the mountain man. And he's in pain. I saw him getting taped up before the ball game, Keith, and he had put the braces on his knees to protect the braces to make sure that to help prevent knee injuries that linemen often sustain because they can't see people who are falling down all around them. Scrambling position, Steve Young. Jeff Hart. Now all New Jersey has to do is run it out. A minute 26. Los Angeles has only one timeout remaining, and the clock is now rolling, and L.A. will spend the timeout. So they'll have no more timeouts when they come back to the line of scrimmage to snap the ball, and 120 to play. So the fourth quarter let down by the Los Angeles Express going to make them 0-3. It can be said another way, Lynn Swan. It hasn't necessarily been a letdown by the Los Angeles defense, but rather a stunning comeback by the New Jersey Generals. I yeah. think that's more the case because Doug Flutie has been scrambling, creating things. Uh, the players have just responded, done a good job. I don't think there's been a letdown whatsoever by the defense of the Express. The clock starts rolling now and Los Angeles with no timeouts remaining. So the Ex Express is going to go home with injuries and an 0-3 record. While the New Jersey's record will go to 2-1 and, and they're on their way south to run into a bunch of angry people I would think in the defending champion Baltimore Stars. We've had big performances by a lot of people today, and we've had key injuries, including one right there to the right tackle, Jeff Hart. Buck is now rolling inside 40 seconds to play in the ball game. 
And they can take one more snap. Steve Young in today's ball game ran only two times in 64 offensive plays. That was the game plan. But after building a 24-14 lead, they couldn't hold it as New Jersey came storming back. And they don't have to snap the ball again. The clock is rolling along. You've still got about 12 seconds to play in the ball game. But it belongs to the New Jersey Generals as Doug Flutie and Steve Young meet in the center of the field. And Young goes his way and Flutie goes his. And Doug's walk will be a lot happier than that of Steve Young. Your final score, New Jersey 35, Los Angeles 24. Now, let's visit with Doug Flutie. He talks with Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, I'm with Doug Flutie and Herschel Walker, and now you have to be relaxed. You have to feel at home now. We did. Uh, I really felt good out there, especially in the second half. Had some problems throwing the ball. I wasn't throwing the ball real well today, but we fought through it. You know, it seems Herschel playing with Doug. There's just so many possibilities every time the ball is snapped that it's got to make it easier, not only for, for him, but for you guys, too. No doubt it'll make it a great deal easier. So people are going to have to throw up defense with uh, Doug and tremendous players. I think a lot of the NFL have criticized him. I think now that yep. they were wrong. So Doug go out and play as a winner. And I yeah, yeah, yeah. going to have to respect that. Now, on that pass, a little I hear you. Like the Clarence. Did you have any idea you were going to do that until it happened? Not until it happened. I started out there. I was looking downfield. Nothing was there. Tucked it under, started to run, and I knew I wasn't going to get the first down. I saw Clarence slip off. I just got rid of it. How much of the offense is in there, and how much do you feel like you have command of? We have everything in. Uh, we have everything in. I feel pretty good about everything. You add things from week to week depending on who you're playing. You know, little twists, little wrinkles, but pretty much we got everything in. How do you like playing out a wide receiver? We talked about that before the game. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm learning to adapt to it because I think we're going to have to open the game up. I think we got so much talent on offense that we can do so many things. But we can just open the, the game up and make the defense come out and start guessing. And when, once they start guessing, you got them beat. You know, I think all of us have gone through it in our years of football, high school, and college, where they always say the defense progresses much faster than the offense. How much better and how much can the timing get better in the offensive unit with you guys right now? Quite a bit. Um, I'm still a little bit shaky on things. I think today, primarily, I just wasn't throwing the ball real well. But our passing game's got a long way to go yet, and I'm still working on it. And things are going to come together soon. We were able to move the ball, which is great. But we're relying on our defense, especially in the first half today, to make some big plays for us. And they came through with quite a bit of big plays. You and I have talked about it, and so many other people say that one of the toughest things for a quarterback coming into prof the professional ranks is being able to read the defenses. Are you doing that better? That's true. I, I am. Um, I'm still thinking a little too much out over the ball you know, of where I should be going with the ball and that type of thing but I you can see what happens there are a lot more combination coverages there's a lot more man coverages and it's it's difficult to pick up for a little while but I get, it's got to get to where it's second nature and I'm not having to concentrate as much over the ball you feel comfortable in the offensive scheme the way they moved you around Herschel I know that I feel a lot comfortable because I've always stated that I wanted to be an all-around player and I think so far moving out the wide out and then coming back into the backfield has helped people to see that I can do more than just run the ball. All right. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for talking to us. Keith. Thank you, Timmy. All right, Timmy, thank you very much. And they're mighty happy and proud of their little general here in the Meadowlands right now because he sparked a stirring comeback. His team was trailing by 10 points when he scored this go-ahead touchdown. Again, that was an excellent play set up by his rolling out early in the ball game. Good play action by Herschel Walker, and it makes it look easy. It makes it look all so simple when he's playing his kind of football. The coup de gras was the 42-yard touchdown run by Kerry Justin after an interception. And uh, so it is done. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Today's coverage of the Los Angeles Express New Jersey Generals game produced by Ken Wolf. Directed by Craig Janoff. Our technical director, Rich Gilbert. Associate director, Rob Biner. This is Keith Jackson along with Lynn Swan and Tim Brandt in East Rutherford, New Jersey, the USFL, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports.